What is going on everybody? It is a cloudy cold Saturday here in the Panhandle of Texas and today I'm going to go get an engine hoist, cherry picker if you will, to start moving about the cabin in my garage to get Cece's engine ready, resealed, and ready for when she comes back. So that is what I'm heading to go do right now. I'm going to stop at the old Harbor Freight and see what they've got over there first. And yeah, it's going to be a fun day. I may even do an oil change on the daily, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I mean, everything's fairly normal still here, so that's always a good thing. And I go back to the dealership on Monday to continue wrenching. So it was uh, a good break, I guess, from the hustle and bustle of my life and uh, yeah I'm definitely ready for everything to go back to normal because I miss my show people and my show family but it's been good too to just be able to chill for a little bit but. so we're heading there right now to go get an engine hoist and we'll be back at the CC headquarters let's go y'all okay, so I got it <laughs> and now it's assembly time at home so Yay, I'm so excited. So I got the hoist home and unloaded and unpackaged and now it's in a million pieces on my garage floor, but we are fixing to put it together, so let's go. Okay guys, so I'm so sorry that I didn't video me actually putting said hoist together, but boom. At least it's on the hoist now, so. I'm gonna give y'all a little video tour of it. And so here we go. I got the hoist together. And here's the motor, obviously. Nice, nice. It needs a lot of work. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just your uh, typical 12 valve. So it's got a lot of oil leaks and whatnot. Even the transfer case has leaks and the transmission a little bit. Choppo. This is Choppo. But so yeah, I mean, I definitely have my work cut out for me. But at least we're getting somewhere, you know? So here she is. And uh, yeah, love my hoist by the way. Oh, that was my Saturday shenanigans, and I didn't video me putting the hoist together because I actually had a couple buddies over and hanging out drinking beer in the shop, so that's why. But, yeah. Now it's over. It's out of the corner. It's going to be cool to see this build finally done and not in a million pieces like that. But, yeah. Here's your update. What's up guys? Mm -hmm. So this is the next day. I didn't have time to actually do the oil change in Selena. So I'm going to do it right now. So I moved the uh, engine over here in the corner. So it was out of the way and I'd have room. And I jacked her up and put her on stand. So I'm going to be showing y'all basically how I do the oil changes in my car. So here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so first things first. You are going to need a... 15 millimeter socket. It doesn't matter what drive. This is 3 8 drive with my Matco ratchet. That's a flex head. And you also need a 15 16 socket as well. And once again, it doesn't matter what drive. This is half drive, but it doesn't matter. So as you can see, Selena's already up on jack stands. See? And I already laid the drip pan underneath there, so I'm going to crawl under there on my Jeeper Creeper and I will show you what I do. So, here we go. Okay, so since I don't like to have stuff in my eyeballs, I obviously put um, clears on so I could see really well underneath here. Um, I'm gonna show y'all where the drain plug is on this thing. Okay, so this here is my drain plug and I'm just gonna put my catch pan under here for when I go ahead and take it out. All right, so I have my 15 millimeter um, socket with my ratchet and I'm just gonna stick it on there and loosen it 
You just want to loosen it a little bit and then take the rest off with your hand. And just like that. So here's my little catch pan right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But so there's the catch pan and here is the oil draining out into said pan. So even when it's dripping, I still have the catch pan underneath it so it won't go onto the floor. And while that's draining, I'm gonna take my old oil filter out. Okay, so while that's draining, I'm gonna go ahead and take the old oil filter out of here. So I already popped my hood and there's like a little lever right here I just push over and pop it. My engine bay is absolutely disgustingly dirty right now, but it's fine. <laughs> okay, so here it is, my little baby V6. <clears throat> and as you can see, I mean, you can tell where the oil fill is, but... So basically what I do is you take out this here little fill cap. And it says right there what type of oil to use. 5W30 if it can focus. This is the oil fill. This is your dipstick right here. And then this is where the compartment is for the oil filter. So I'm gonna take the cover off. So this is your oil filter, the old one right here. So I'm going to be changing this out with a new one. Here's the new filter that I'll be putting in it. It's K&N. Um, I got it at Walmart actually along with the oil so that's the one I use for it. It's the Performance Silver Edition. I don't know if that matters or not but that's what I use for it. So I just pulled the old one out and I mean it's just like a little rubber o-ring that's on it so I pulled that one out. Okay so now that I got the old filter out I took out the new filter from the little box and it comes with a new o-ring. So I'm going to be taking the old o-ring off that's right here and I can't do anything with nails so I'm going to use a little pocket screwdriver to kind of pry it off and then replace it. So I just get a hold of it and take it off, like that. And then I take my new one and I put it on. Like so. And then, I mean not everybody does this, but I prefer to do it just so it covers myself is I'll take some oil that's in it and I'll actually just lube that new o-ring just around it just so it's not going in completely bone dry. Then I'll take my little oil filter and I'll use the numbers and put them on top versus the bottom that doesn't have them. And I'll put them in like that and make sure it seats properly. Okay, so now my new oil filter is on. I'm gonna put it back in the little slot right here and go down. And just make sure it seats in there, get it started, and then I tighten it down a little easier to have more room, and tighten until it's snugged. So, now we go back underneath, put our oil plug back in so that we don't add new oil without remembering to put the plug back in because speaking from experience, I've done that before plenty of times at work and it's one thing now I definitely remember to do before I put new oil in it, so.
There you go. Okay, so I put my safety squints back on, crawl on my little creeper here. Okay, so now you see where it's just kind of dripping and it's done draining. So we're just gonna stick the plug back in. My squeaky little creeper. Get it snugged down. Then take our ratchet and tighten it. I'm gonna move this uh, drip pan out of the way. So I have clearance for my ratchet. And just snug it down, just like that. Okay, so now it's time to put the new oil in. So I'm gonna grab a funnel because I don't trust myself to not spill it all over the place. So I'm gonna stick it in this here little fill container area. I'm gonna open it. <clears throat> and then with my same little pocket screwdriver, I'm going to slice it this way just a little bit. That way I don't have this huge giant pour spout. I just have like this little half pour spout, which makes it easier to control into this little funnel. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pour it sideways. So that was five quarts. I'm gonna add one more quart just because she's a thirsty girl and she likes to burn oil. So I'm just gonna add one more to it as well. You have it. Just like maple syrup. Delicious. Okay. Now I take my little funnel thing out. Give her a little shake. So let's see the lines are on this side. And there you have it, right at the fill line. So there, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but it's literally right here at the top fill line. See, I don't know if you can, it's so hard to see that, but it's literally right there, so I promise it's okay. And then when I start it, it'll actually suck it down a little bit. So that's absolutely perfect right there. And there you have it. So now I'm gonna put my cover back on and put my oil fill cap back on. Boom. One more thing that I need to show y'all. If you have said Camaro and want to do this for your own Camaro and want to reset it, this is how you do it. So you want to reset this so that it'll go back to 100%. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this set clear on the end and then it'll bring up this menu and then you just go up with your little thing to yes and then you set to clear it again and then it'll go back to 100. So that way you know your intervals for obviously your oil changes and everything like that. So that's how you do it. And there you go, all done. I just gotta take this bad boy off of the jack stands and back her outside. So thanks for watching guys. I'll come up with more stuff to be able to bring to y'all like working on this thing right here. I know everyone wants me to work on this. So, I mean, I guess I'll start working on it. Hope y'all are staying safe and staying clean. So get your toys and projects around the house done. Get some spring cleaning done and uh, stay quarantined. So, bye guys.